In today's lesson, we are going to be looking at the quadratic and vertex form. So in a previous lesson, you would have looked at an investigation um, looking at the quadratic um, or the different forms of the quadratic and vertex form and looking at the different variables and how they affect um, the shape um, of our parabola. So this is going to be kind of a summary on that, on that investigation. Um, and we're going to look at some of the characteristics of the vertex form. So this form, y equals ax minus h squared plus k, this is our vertex form. Um, in a previous lesson, we did look at the standard form, but this is our vertex form. And the reason it's called the vertex is because we are given the vertex in this equation, and that is that the vertex is h and k. So these two values here, the h and k, give us our vertex. So again, the vertex is either that highest point or that lowest point. It's when the curve changes direction. So we get that coordinate or we get that point from this form. Now, we have three variables. I'm going to kind of remove that. We have three variables to kind of consider. We have our A value, we have our H value, and we have our K value. So we have three variables that we have to consider when looking at this vertex form. And these three form or these three variables change how our graph looks. Now the a value, the a value affects the direction of the opening, right? So it affects the direction of the opening as well as the vertical compression or vertical stretch. So it does tell us kind of two things, compression or a stretch. So things we have to consider, and it's not quite written down here, right? Direction of the opening. If A is positive, it opens up. So that would be something that kind of looks like this for a parabola. If it's negative, it opens down. So it looks like this, kind of that N shape. It is a compression if it has values that are between negative 1 and positive 1. So if it has a decimal, which is an easier way of compression, we have a decimal number. And a compression looks something like this. It gets wider. Right? So if we think of compression, we can think of it getting wider. Right, we're compressing it down. Think of like um, when you think of some of those um, videos where they are putting something underneath um, a mechanical press and they're just squeezing it and it gets flatter and, and wider. Um, that would be similar to a compression. A stretch is a value above or not in the range of negative 1 to positive 1. So basically it's just any value that is greater than one. Whether it's positive or negative doesn't matter. Um, it's just greater than one. Let's say plus or minus one. So it could be a negative two, a negative three. We're not too concerned about the sign when we're talking about the stretch or compression. And this would be something kind of like this. Right? If we think of taking like a rubber man and grabbing the head and the feet and pulling, right, it makes it very tall and skinny. The H value affects the horizontal movement of the parabola, right? So that is going to be moving to the left or to the right. Now, one thing to note, since the negative, and we'll go back up and take a look at it, since the equation itself has a negative in there for H, then that means the negative is part of the equation. So our H value will always have the opposite sign as what is shown, right? So if we see a negative in the equation, our H value is positive. If we see a positive in our equation, our H value is negative. So that is some, one thing to note, and that is something that is going to be very important to remember. The K value, the K value affects the vertical movement of the parabola. So this is just saying up, oops, not, not coordinate, it's just saying going up or down. And then the vertex, as we mentioned, the vertex will have the value of hk. So 
whatever that H and K values are, that will be our vertex. So that will be the coordinates of our vertex. So we want to label each graph with the proper equation. And so the first thing we're going to do, take a look at our general equation, or look at our three or four equations and try to match them to the graphs. I'll give you a help or give you a hint for the first one. Right, this red one is this first one here. So this y equals x squared is our red one, and this is our basic function, or our basic quadratic, we'll say. So the y equals x squared, that's our basic quadratic. That's our quadratic without changing it at all. Um, that's the, the simplest form. y equals negative x squared plus 3. So we have a couple um, variables in here now. We have a negative out front and we have a plus 3 at the end. So if we go back to that first page of looking at the a, h, and k, and what does it tell us? Well, the negative in front means that it opens down. So looking at this graph, there is only one graph that opens down, and that is this purple one here. The plus three means that it's moved up three, or we moved our parabola up three, which we can also see because the vertex is now up three. It's, it's three units higher. Our next one is y equals three x squared. So the only thing here is this small, or the, not this small, but this variable, and that's an a variable. So when a is 3, right, that means that we have a vertical stretch. So I want to look at my red, or my basic quadratic in red, and I want to find another quadratic that is stretched. So it should appear skinnier than my other one, or than this red one. And I do see that it is this yellow one. So you might have guessed that by how um, I kind of circled it in yellow. But this yellow one, we can see that nothing else has changed except for it looks skinnier compared to the red one. And the last one, hopefully the last one is relatively straightforward. There's only one remaining. But if we didn't get this, we have an A value of 0 0.4, so a decimal. So that should tell us that we have a compression, so it should appear wider than our basic quadratic, and a negative four at the end. So that should tell us that it's gone down four. So this one in black, it does appear to be wider, and it is definitely lower than the other ones. And we can tell by also looking at the vertex, that vertex is lower than the other ones. In these next examples, we're going to look at um, what we're just going to basically compare two um, relations or two quadratics, and we're going to look for which one will be, um, oops, not the widest, that does not make sense grammatically, the widest, or basically meaning the most vertically, vertically compressed, and which parabola will have its vertex farther from the x-axis. Right. So basically what this is telling us is we are looking for in one, we are looking at the a value. And for b, or for two, we are looking for the k value. It's farther from the x-axis, that means up or down. Right. So we're trying to see which one is farther than that. So if I look at the first two, right, I'm just going to go through and label the a value and the k value for each. So the first one has an a value of 7 and a k value of 2. The next one has an a value of 2 and a k value of 7. So they're switched around. So first we need to think about, okay, which one will be wider? When the a value is greater than 1 or negative 1, right, so when it's a larger value, that means it's skinnier. That means there's a stretch. So the for the first one, this is going to be skinnier, or sorry, wider. 
because it has a smaller a value. For which one is going to be have its vertex farther from the x-axis, it's also going to be the second one because it is up seven units, so it's farther from the x-axis. The other one was up two units, so it wasn't as far. So the equation, the second equation is going to be wider and farther when compared to the other one. For the next one, for B, again, we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to list the A values for each. So you have a 0 0.5. I don't see anything in the second one, so the A value would have to be an invisible one. That's the only value that we can multiply by that we don't see. The K value is going to be 2 for the first one and negative 1.5 for the second one. So now we have to think about, okay, which one is going to be wider and which one is going to be farther away? Well, this first one is going to be wider because again, when we look at the A value, it does have a smaller A value. So the smaller the A value, the wider it is. And we're talking about just the value itself. We're not looking at a positive or negative saying that negative is smaller. We're looking at just the number. So take out the negative or positive with it and look at just the value. So 0 0.5 is smaller than 1, so the first one will be wider. For which one is farther away, that is also going to be the first one. Because it is 2 units up from the x-axis, or, or it's up 2, and that means that we are going to be farther away. For the second one, it doesn't really matter that it's the negative, it just is a matter of the k value being smaller than the other one. So 1.5 is a smaller value than 2. So the first one is both wider and farther away. Again, we'll change this to widest. But we're doing the same thing, right? We're looking for that A value and that K value. So if I look at the A value, I have 0 0.1. The A value here is negative 0.01. My k values, I have negative 9 and a k value of negative 0 0.9. So again, the smaller the a value, the wider it is. So the second one is wider because it has a smaller a value. Right? Decimal or 0 0.01 is smaller than 0 0.1. However, in terms of which one's farther away, that's going to be the first one because it is down 9, so it is farther. The other one would only be down 0 0.9, right? So again, it, when we're, for farther away, we're looking for the larger number. Lastly, for D, again, same idea. We're going to look at the A values for both. We have 10 and 11. We're looking at the k values as well. We have negative 10 and positive 1. So in terms of which one is wider, it would be the first one wider because of the smaller a value. And it is also going to be farther because it is down or moved down 10. So that means the vertex is going to be farther away, whereas the other one is only up one. Right? So again, it's just looking at those kind of two key um, kind of characteristics or those two key variables. <laughs> For the next one, we have a table that's going to be that's going to be looking at um, a bunch of different quadratic expressions and we're going to go through and try to identify some of these key characteristics. Right? So looking at the vertex, right? vertex is h and k. So we take the value that um, we see for the opposite for the h, which will be positive 4, 
And we don't see a K value at the end here, but the only value that we can add that we don't have to show is going to be zero. The axis of symmetry for this, so it is going to be a vertical line and a vertical line has an equation of X equals. And because it goes right through the middle, it is going to have an X value or X equals four. So the X value of our vertex is also the axis of symmetry. Stretch or compression rel factor relative to y equals x squared. So basically, is this stretch or compressed compared to our basic function? In this case, our a value is what we're looking for, but our a value is an invisible one. When a is one, it is congruent. So that means it is the same shape. There is no stretch or compression, right, when a is one. So it's just our normal shape. Direction of the opening, it is opening up because it is a positive A value. If we wanted to graph this, roughly drawing our axes, um, I would argue that it is going to be to the right four, but not up any, so it's gonna look something like this. Again, that's just a, it's just this quick sketch. It's not exactly what it's going to look like. And that is again because this vertex here is going to be four zero. What values may X take, right? X can be any number. So X can be all numbers. And we would say that X is with a kind of, so we're gonna use some two new symbols, kind of X with like this little kind of curved E or it's an epsilon, which just means X can be any, and we're gonna use R represent real numbers, right? So basically X can be any real number, any number you can think of, there will be an X value in our expression or in our quadratic for it, because these lines continue up and out. So they continue on forever. What values may Y take? Well, looking at our vertex and the fact that it opens up, the Y values can only equal zero or be higher. So y is going to be greater than or equal to zero because of where our vertex is and how it opens. I'll do the second one and then I'll let you try the other two on your own. So again, for our vertex, we're looking at the h and k value. Those come right from our equation. We have to remember though that our vertex is the opposite or the h, sorry, the h value is the opposite. So instead of negative five, it's positive five and then the K value we take as is, which is negative three. Our axis of symmetry is going to go through the vertex. It's gonna be in the form X equals, and it's going to have the X value um, of our vertex, which is going to be five. Our axis or our stretch or compression, our A value is eight. So it is greater than one. This means that this A, this A value of eight means that we have a stretch. And actually, I'm going to go back congruent. I'm going to say no change, just so we kind of remember what congruent means. Direction of opening, it is up because our A value is positive. So if I wanted to roughly sketch this, again, I'm going to roughly sketch. It is over 5 and down 3 for our vertex. And it is opening up, and it is stretched, so it should be skinnier. So I'm going to draw something that looks like a skinnier parabola. What values may X take? Well, again, the same thing. X can be any number because again, these arrows are moving, going up and outwards, right to the left and to the right, ever so slightly, um, but they are continuing on forever. So X can be any real number, or X can be any number you can think of. For Y, so again, looking at the vertical values, the lowest it can be is negative three. So we're gonna have negative three somewhere in there. Because it opens up, that means that Y can be anything that is greater than or equal to negative three. Any value above negative three, we will have a Y value for, right? Or our, in our equation, in our expression. Okay, so go through and try to do the last two on your own, right? Go through, use these, use these two examples um, to kind of help guide you. Remember, you're going to be looking for the A, H, and K um, to help you for the different characteristics. Go back to that first 
page or that first page or that summary on the first page um, to help you if you do get stuck. But um, take, take a second, pause the video to try to do the next two on your own. So coming back and looking at our, our last two examples in this table, we should see the following values or the following answers, right? So we have a vertex of zero, three, an axis of symmetry of X equals zero, A value is 0 0.5, so it's a compression. It does open down because that A value is a negative, right? Oh, I'm sorry, going back up, you might wonder, well, where does that zero come from? Again, remember in our general equation, right? y equals a x minus h squared plus k. Because I don't see a bracket with the x, there's nothing that I'm adding or subtracting. So the only value that I can add or subtract that doesn't change anything or I don't show is, is zero. So because we don't see anything in the brackets, it is a zero for our h value. Sorry, going and then it opens down because of the negative graphing it that means we just move it just has a vertex of zero three it's opening down and it's compressed so it is going to look wider again the x values can be any real number they can be any value because it, it does continue to stretch out forever um, and the y values they are going to be less than or equal to three right the reason they are less than is because um, it opens down so we can't have anything higher than three for the last one, negative four, negative six, again, the H and the K, the negative four because of the opposite, oops, the opposite H value. So we see a plus four, so that means it's a minus four, and then a minus six is the same for the K. Axis of symmetry, X equals negative four. Um, the A value, I guess it's writing negative, is negative four. So because that value of four is greater than one, it is a stretch. It opens down because it is a negative value, and graphing it, again, I'm going to graph my vertex, negative 4, negative 6, and then roughly draw a narrower or a skinnier um, parabola that opens down. Again, x can be any real number, and x or y is going to be less than or equal to negative 6 because it opens down. The y values can't be higher than the vertex or the negative 6. One last example, so now looking at a scenario. So Superman hops a tall building in a single bound according to the equation, h is equal to negative two um, times t minus six squared plus 182, right? Where h is the height in meters above the ground and t is the time in seconds. So roughly sketching this, it is going to look something we're gonna have our vertex at six and 182 because of our H and K value. So I'm gonna say roughly it's about here. It does open down because of the negative, right? Our A is equal to negative two. So that means it opens down and there is a bit of a stretch. So we're gonna say it looks something like this. Find them, so that's roughly what it's looking like. Six, 182. B says find the maximum height of Superman. So the maximum height is going to be from our vertex. Specifically, when we're talking about the maximum height, we're looking at the Y value of the vertex. Or if we're talking about the max or min, it's going to be the Y value. So in this case, it is 182 meters. How long does it take him to reach his maximum height? Well, to reach his maximum height, that would be the X value. The X value of the vertex in this case is six. So six seconds is how long it takes him to reach his maximum height. And then lastly, how high was Superman above the ground when he leapt? So this is another fancy way of asking, what is his height when the time equals zero? Or we're looking for the Y intercept. So we're looking for the Y intercept height when time is zero. 
So we can do that by taking our equation, h is equal to negative 2, t minus 6 squared plus 182. And if we're saying when time is 0, that is a fancier way of saying when t equals 0, what is h? We plug that in and we can solve. So negative 2 times 0 minus 6 squared plus 182. Get h is equal to negative 72 plus 182. So I just kind of did some simplifying there. And we have 110. So that means that he is already 110 um, meters above the ground when he jumps. So maybe he's on another building and he jumps higher, um, or he is, um, he is um, standing on something or he's flying and then he jumps in the air and goes over again who knows it's Superman after all right but the height at time zero is 110 so basically it means he is 110 meters above the ground when time is zero so again this is just taking the information that we looked at in the previous investigation um, applying it to um, a specific form of a quadratic again specifically the vertex form and using that to identify key characteristics and features of our parabola or of our quadratic relation.